Hi, fifth graders, uh, and welcome to anyone else who's interested as well. Uh, happy Poetry Day. It's Friday again for me. Uh, very sunny today. And we're going to read and write poems about mysteries, things that you wonder about, uh, paradoxes. Um, a good friend of mine told me a story about her daughter, who was then five years old, who came to her and said, you know, Mommy, uh, I have a couple of questions. Um, and the mom said, okay. And the girl said, why do we die? And the mom wasn't sure how to answer. And she said, what's your other question? And the girl said, uh, why do you wear the same pair of earrings every day? And I like that story because there are things we wonder about, um, all kinds of things, and those questions can make interesting poems even when there's not an answer. So I thought I'd start with a very short poem by um, Antonio Machado. Uh, in Spanish, it's called Bueno es Saber. Uh, Bueno es saber que los vasos nos sirven para beber. Lo malo es que no sabemos para qué sirve la sed. It's good to know. It's good to know that glasses are for drinking out of. What troubles me is why we feel this thirst. Why do we feel this thirst? You could offer a reasonable answer, uh, but for me, what the poem suggests is that every question may have an answer, but the answer raises other questions, and you kind of keep following the questions back, and sometimes you arrive at a mystery that can't be solved. Now, that doesn't mean we shouldn't try to answer questions, uh, but um, eventually you reach the limit of what can be explained. And beyond that limit lies mystery. And a lot of the poems today try to get at that mystery. Uh, they don't necessarily offer answers. And sometimes they just describe something that has made the poet think. So here's a poem from China. Uh, the poet is named Gu Cheng. And it's translated as far and close. Far and close. You look a while at me, look a while at a cloud. I feel you are far away while looking at me. So very close while looking at the cloud. And this poem captures something mysterious, but how you can feel close to a person and far from a person at the same time. And sometimes even when someone is right next to you, you can feel an enormous distance. And other times with a person who's far away, you can feel really connected. Um, and sometimes you feel both at once, both the connection and the distance. And, you know, I have been thinking about this uh, here in this time of pandemic where, you know, you may be in a house very close to a lot of people and you may feel really emotionally close, mentally close some of the time and some of the time you may feel far away. And similarly, you may have people who are uh, at a great distance right now, but there are times when you can feel very close to them. Um, and so this is kind of a mystery. Where, what creates that feeling of closeness? What creates that distance? Um, and I brought up paradoxes. You know, um, a paradox is a seeming contradiction that nevertheless may be true. Um, so 
I'm going to ask you, what do you wonder about? What puzzles you? There are certain kind of eternal mysteries. Uh, where does the light go when it goes out? And how do you get the toothpaste back into the tube? Uh, when I was a kid, I wondered why older people cried when they were happy. And it, 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 it seemed like a paradox yeah, because I associated crying with being sad and I associated being happy with either smiling or laughing. Uh, but I would say when you get older, crying when you're happy starts to make more sense. So paradox. This is an observation I heard this comedian, I think it was Lily Tomlin, make uh, years ago. And I've always remembered it. She said, I went to the store and bought a wastebasket. The cashier put the wastebasket inside a bag. I carried it home and put the bag inside the wastebasket. And to me, that's, that's kind of a paradox and it's puzzling and you wonder about it. Why is it appropriate uh, to put the wastebasket inside the bag on the way home and the bag inside the wastebasket once you get home? I mean, now we recycle the bag or reuse it. Uh, so things have changed a little, but that, that reversal kind of tickles the brain, tickles the mind. And I think a lot of these mysteries that poets are writing about that we'll read today are kind of brain ticklers. They just make you think something falls into two different categories and you're trying to figure out where to put it, how to think about it. So here's a poem by Sami al Kasim. It's called End of a Discussion with a Jailer. So I imagine this person, you know, stuck in a jail cell but the jail cell has a window. And he says, From the window of my small cell, I can see trees smiling at me, roofs filled with my people, windows weeping and praying for me. From the window of my small cell, I can see your large cell. And to me, that poem says something about freedom of the mind, even when you don't have the freedom of going wherever you want to go. Um, to me, there's a paradox in that poem. So here's another one I like. This is by a poet named Kemal, Kemal Ozer from Turkey. And it's called At the Beach. At the Beach. The waves are erasing the footprints of those who are walking the beach. The wind is carrying away the words two people are saying to each other. But still they are walking the beach, their feet making new footprints. Still the two are talking together, finding new words. Our footsteps don't last, but we keep walking. Our words don't last, but we keep talking. The poet is interested in this seeming contradiction. Uh, I always, you know, uh, think about that when I'm at the beach and people are making these elaborate uh, castles or other constructions in the sand and they spend hours and hours and then the sand comes in, I mean the, the tide comes in and washes, you know, whatever was built away. And people do that, I'd say, because they enjoy the process of making what they're making. And to me, a lot of what's great about writing poetry is the process of making the poem. And of course, it's nice to have a poem at the end that you can show people, 
but uh, the process itself can be a reward. Um, here's another poem not exactly a paradox, but it's simply an idea that fascinates the poet. And I hope while you're listening to me, you're trying to think of what are the ideas that puzzle me, that fascinate me? What are the things you think about, the questions you don't really have an answer for, but that interest you? So this is by uh, a Russian poet who moved to the United States, uh, also a novelist, Vladimir Nabokov. It's called Only the Birds. Only the birds are able to throw off their shadow. The shadow always stays behind on earth. Our imagination flies. We are its shadow on the earth. In a way, that's, that's kind of an extended metaphor. The way, you know, uh, a bird leaves its shadow behind when it goes up. And uh, our ideas sometimes leave us behind uh, when we go off on some kind of mental train of thought. Um, here's another poem by Antonio Machado, who, who wrote that first one about thirst. I'll do it in Spanish again. El ojo que ves. El ojo que ves no es ojo porque tú lo veas. Es ojo porque te ve. In English, the eye you see. The eye you see is not an eye because you see it. It's an eye because it sees you. So a lot of these poems are, are ideas you kind of turn around. There, there's a little flip in them, a click where something happens. You get it or you try to get it, uh, you have a moment of understanding or sometimes it's a moment of wonder, that moment when you notice something that uh, you appreciate maybe for the first time. Uh, you can see uh, in Berkeley last year we had a couple of like amazing double rainbow days where there was just this very vivid double rainbow in the sky. But you can also see, you know, sometimes a car will leak oil and there'll be a puddle of oil on the street and you'll see like a beautiful rainbow in the dirty oil. Um, and that, I don't know, that image can set you to thinking and asking questions. And that's what you're kind of looking for uh, in the poems you write today. Uh, or uh, something you can try to think about. What are those images, those things you've seen that have left you with questions? So here's a slightly longer poem called Bird's Nest. Bird's Nests. You see bird's nests like unpicked fruit in branches bare of any leaves. When I was small, Grandma cut my hair and tossed the clumps onto our lawn. Birds will use it to line their nests and keep the eggs safe and warm. An amazing thing, my ordinary hair woven into a bird's wild tapestry. I really like the last stanza of that poem, an amazing thing, my ordinary hair woven into a bird's wild tapestry. Um, the contrast of amazing, ordinary, and wild. I really like those words. And if in your poem, you can include something amazing, something ordinary, and something wild. Uh, that's a great formula for a poem. A haircut is pretty ordinary, uh, though I'll admit that a haircut in the front yard is kind of unusual. And, you know, there may be more front yard haircuts going on these days and haircuts in the living room and haircuts in the kitchen. Uh, 
but maybe there's something in those at-home haircuts that creates a sense of mystery. Um, I'll read a poem in a week or two about finding poems in unexpected places. Uh, but the challenge today is to write about an idea that fascinates you, a question you've asked yourself, a mystery that you can't seem to solve. Uh, I'd say any questions. You can't really ask me questions. Oh, I do want to tell you, though, that Ms. Goyen sent me, like, I got to see some of the first batch of poems, and uh, they were really great. Uh, I could tell people had put a lot of thought into it and uh, let their imagination go. And I encourage you to try and do that this time. So I want to hear what mysteries are puzzling you or making you think um, and have fun writing these poems. Oh, nope, that didn't work. <laughs>